Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of News Dose. We're give you all of the latest gaming news and today we have to talk about a major announcement for the PlayStation 5. I know these new consoles are incredibly exciting, but for a lot of fans they need that proper next generation exclusive title to release first and well a big one is coming very soon. Yeah, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart got an official release date today and I have to say, I'm very excited about this one. So we're going to talk about that later in the video and what it means for the PS5 and also some interesting Nintendo games and rumors have hit the internet. Of course Nintendo will be celebrating both the Zelda and Pokemon anniversary this year and after some new findings, we could be getting some reveals for these franchises soon. Well, we'll look into all that as well, but before we get into all that, we got some other topics to talk about and to start things off today, let's talk about Ubisoft. And there are actually a few different things we need to talk about when it comes to Ubisoft. And right away, let's talk about next generation game prices, because I know this has been a hot topic for quite a while. Ubisoft has confirmed that they are still undecided on whether or not they want to increase the price of their AAA games. We have seen a few different publishers move up to $70 games, including PlayStation and 2K games. Now, there are some other publishers on the fence about this, though, and Ubisoft is one of those, and they haven't committed to making that jump just yet. It is interesting, however, that they still haven't ruled it out. I think for some of these publishers, including Ubisoft, they're looking at how much success these $70 games have. If they are indeed successful, then we could see more publishers make that jump, and based off this comment, Ubisoft could be on that list. However, one interesting thing that they said is that they're actually moving away from big AAA games. Not completely or anything like that, but they want to diversify their lineup just a bit more rather than solely relying on AAA games alone. They plan on doing this by complementing their AAA lineup with free-to-play games and premium experiences. Now, I don't know exactly what premium experiences means, but if anything, this gives me hope that Ubisoft brings back Rayman. I mean, come on, why has it been so long since we got a new Rayman game? At least there is that rumored Mario Plus Rabbit sequel. I'm really hoping that turns out to be true. Regardless though, we should expect more diversity from Ubisoft this generation than what we saw with the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Moving on, earlier this week an Epic Games representative told PC Gamer that they would have more exclusives coming to the Epic Games Store in the next two years than they have published to date. Yeah, I know not everybody's going to like that, as there are a lot of people who would prefer to just get their games on Steam instead, but this has been a successful strategy for Epic Games so far, and it looks like they're going to double down. Well, a few of those PC Store exclusives were announced today, including Axiom Verge 2 and the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts has officially been announced for PC, but it will be an Epic Games Store exclusive. Now this includes Kingdom Hearts 1.5, 2.5 Remix, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue, Kingdom Hearts 3 and Remind DLC, and you can even get Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, which released last year. This is big for Kingdom Hearts fans, and for those who haven't played these games yet, I do recommend them. I think they're a great experience, though the stories can be a little convoluted. I still think the story is highly entertaining, but it can be all over the place. This is a lot to look forward to though, and the good news is that they will be releasing next month on March 30th. So you're not going to have to wait too long to play these games, but again, this is an Epic Games Store exclusive. Most of the time it does seem like these are timed deals, and that might be the case here, but if you don't want to wait, or if you like the Epic Games Store, go check that out. Axiom Verge 2 though is something else to look forward to. I personally loved the first game when I played it on the Switch a few years ago. It's very similar to the old school 2D Metroid games, and if you haven't played that game, go check it out. I'm definitely looking forward to the sequel though. Now speaking of big game releases, we gotta talk about Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart for the PS5. This is a next generation exclusive, meaning it will not come to the PS4. That should be expected as it was developed with the solid state drive in mind. A big mechanic in this game is how you can warp location to location without any load times. That's in part thanks to the blazingly fast PS5 solid state drive, and not only is it impressive, but it looks like a lot of fun. Well, we got an unofficial release date today, as Sony revealed it will launch on the PS5 on June 11th. Yeah, let's go! This is the first AAA PS5 exclusive developed by a PlayStation Studio. 
Of course you have the Demon Souls remake, but that's technically a second party game developed by Bluepoint. That's still a phenomenal game, and in my opinion the best overall PS5 game to date. Ratchet & Clank though is developed by Insomniac Games, and there's a lot of trust with this studio. I mean, if you look at all the games they've developed over the years, you just know that Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart will be another top tier PS5 exclusive. I always like to do those top 25 game lists, and this is one of those games that could make that list at the beginning of the generation and still be on there 7 years from now. That's how much confidence I have in Insomniac Games. I mean, they did the original Spyro Trilogy, Ratchet & Clank of course, Resistance which is highly underrated in my opinion, Sunset Overdrive which was just incredible, and most recently, Spider-Man. And if you really think about it, Insomniac Games will have released two PlayStation 5 games in less than one year. Miles Morales and now Rift Apart. When Sony acquired Insomniac Games, they knocked it out of the park. I mean, if you look at it, Insomniac Games was acquired for just $229 million, which, the more I look at it, that was a bargain and a half. We're now seeing studios go for billions of dollars, so Insomniac Games, which is incredibly talented, going for only $229 million, yeah, that was a steal. I'm excited, though, to see what they do with Rift Apart. My personal favorite is still Ratchet & Clank Kraken Time, but looking at the presentation of Rift Apart, it looks like you're playing a movie by this point. It's got some cool new game mechanics and an interesting dynamic with a new character that you'll likely play as. I'm definitely excited for this game, and the PS5 is getting off to a great start with their exclusive lineup this generation. Let's talk about some Nintendo stuff though because they have some major anniversaries taking place this year. You have the Zelda 35th Anniversary, Metroid's 35th Anniversary, Pokemon's 25th, and then you also have Donkey Kong's 40th. Now, they may not celebrate all four of these games the way they deserve, but I think it's safe to say that Pokemon and Zelda will have some big reveals this year. In fact, we're already seeing it with Pokemon. They've made several announcements already, including new Pokemon Snap, which releases on April 30th. I'm very excited about that game as I am a huge fan of the original, but there's still a lot of speculation that they may have more up their sleeves. We've talked about this several times, but there have been some leaks that a new Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remake will release sometime in 2021. There's also a rumor that a new Detective Pikachu is in development, but so far these are only just rumors. The thing is, Pokemon Day does take place on February 27th, and they have confirmed that they have announcements to make during that week. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it will be game related because Pokemon is a huge brand that goes beyond just gaming. However, Insider Kelios does claim that a Pokemon Direct will take place that week. Kelios is currently saying that a Pokemon Direct will be on the 24th or the 25th. This isn't confirmed information though, so take this with a grain of salt, but honestly, I wouldn't really be surprised if they do have a Pokemon Direct around that time frame. Hopefully for a Diamond and Pearl remake. That would be awesome, though I really do hope it's more similar to the classic formula rather than the Let's Go games. I don't mind the Let's Go games personally, but I would prefer the classic formula. As for Zelda, however, there is an absolute expectation for Nintendo to do something for one of their most beloved franchises ever made. We saw last year how Nintendo celebrated Mario's 35th anniversary, and I think most people do expect a similar treatment for Zelda. And that's the thing. There has been rumors of several remakes and remasters coming over to the Nintendo Switch. Last August, Amazon UK listed Zelda Skyward Sword as coming to the Switch, but so far nothing has happened with that. However, some new trademarks were spotted online for Zelda Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass. Of course, this has led to rampant speculation that these games are being ported over to the Nintendo Switch, and to be honest, I would absolutely love that. I think Wind Waker is one of the best looking games of all time thanks to its timeless art style, and Phantom Hourglass is an interesting handheld Zelda. It's a little bit different because you play the game in its entirety with a stylus as it was a Nintendo DS game. That can throw some people off, but it's still a good game. With that said, I do think it's important to note that trademarks doesn't necessarily mean that a new game is coming. Companies have to renew trademarks all the time, so they could just be doing their due diligence here. Again though, I would love if these games do get a re-release. I've personally always preferred the handheld Zelda games in specific, so for me, if they could do a collection of those games similar to how they did the Mario collection last year, I would be absolutely thrilled. Now, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Track would be a little different just because it doesn't have that second screen, but if they could also bring over Minish Cap, Oracle of Ages and Seasons, and Link to the Past, 
That would be amazing. As for Wind Waker, that game did re-release on the Wii U, and I do understand that. They did the same with Twilight Princess, but not very many people actually had the Wii U. I think even though these games have been on several different Nintendo consoles, I would like them to do it one more time for the Switch. For that matter, bring over all the Zelda games that you can and really capitalize on the success of Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild has now sold more than 20 million copies, so it's the perfect time to port these old Zelda games while so many people are interested in the franchise. I do think the Switch could pull off some magic yet again and could sell even more than the originals did all those years ago. Nonetheless, this is just a trademark, so I mean, this could be nothing. I want it to be true, but we'll definitely have to wait and see. On to our next topic, we got a couple sells to talk about. It's always nice to get a discount on games you've been eyeing for a while, and if you play on the PlayStation or PC, there's plenty of games with really good discounts right now. And first, let's take a look at PlayStation. They're doing a big in Japan sale where you can get a discount for up to 85% off. This will go on through February 24th, so you do have plenty of time to decide on what you want to get, and there's some really good games here too if you do like Japanese style games. Just scanning through them, here are some games that stood out to me. You have the Danganronpa franchise, Dark Souls, Kingdom Hearts, Trolls of the Cold Steel, Disgaea, Nino Kuni 2, which is 84% off, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, and Kakarot. And also the hidden gem that I would highly recommend, AI Somnium Files. That comes from the Zero Escape creator and it's 60% off right now. So that's a lot of good games, so definitely go check that out when you have the chance. As for Steam, they have some major deals for Lunar New Year's. As you would expect when it comes to Steam, you can get some really good games for cheap and add to that never-ending list of games for your backlog. To name just a few that you can grab today, you have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order for $20, Control Ultimate Edition for just $24, Sea of Thieves at $28, Spyro Reignited is only $14. I mean, that's three games for an absolutely incredible price, and then you have Death Stranding for $35 and so many more. Definitely go check those out, whether you like big AAA games or smaller independent games. Now onto the poll of the day, with the Xbox Bethesda acquisition closing soon, I wanted to see what you all think will happen with the acquisition. Do you believe Xbox will make Bethesda games exclusive to Xbox and PC, or do you think they will keep them multi-platform? And the overwhelming majority of you voted that they will be exclusive to Xbox and PC. This wasn't even a close contest this time, and you know, I do understand the logic behind this. Xbox invested $7.5 billion into ZeniMax, and it would be a major boost to Xbox if they do make these games exclusive. There's always been that heated debate that Xbox needs more exclusives, and this would go a long way in improving their exclusive library of games. So I do lean on that side that they will be exclusive, but Microsoft is kind of unpredictable at the same time. I can't really imagine that they would be multi-platform, but we've never really seen an acquisition like this before. So I'm just kind of going with the flow of things and seeing where this goes. If I were to make a prediction though, I would say that yes, they're likely gonna be exclusive. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me personally to invest $7.5 billion and only use them for Xbox Game Pass. I would think that they would want these games to be system sellers, or in other words, Xbox Game Pass sellers. If these games aren't on other platforms, it does make their console and subscription service more enticing. I would think that that would be the direction that they would want to take. So yeah, I think that they will be exclusive, but we'll wait and see what happens. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.